Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Women's Rugby Show weekly podcast with me, Sam, by the way. Well, this week we'll be looking at the Celtic Challenge and ran that up after the regular round of fixtures ended this past weekend before the playoffs kickstart in two weeks' time. After our little roundup, we'll be talking to Gwalia Lightning's Maisie Davis, kind of about her rugby career so far, how she's reached Gwalia, how the selection came about, and also just how much she's enjoying the experience of playing in this competition, just how needed this is for the development of Welsh rugby. Before we get into this episode, if you are listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure you head over to YouTube and Instagram to see a video version of this episode and also all the other content we put out through a week. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you head over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts to download it and listen to us on the go. Let's get into this episode. So after five rounds of the Celtic Challenge, the league is now split into two parts after those regular season games ended last weekend. The Wolfhounds, Edinburgh and Clovers, so the two Irish teams in Edinburgh from Scotland, are battling for the victory in that top half with though that's the order those three finished in in the league. And then the bottom half, Gwalia, Brithon and Glasgow will be fighting out for fourth to sixth place. And in the playoff round, each country will host a weekend of games, will be two games a weekend, and with one from each half of the draw. So first weekend up in Scotland, 17th of February, Glasgow played Brithon in Brithon Thunder, that is in Scotland and Glasgow, while Edinburgh will host, host the Woodhounds, Wolfhounds at the Hive Stadium. Second round will be on the 24th of February in Ireland, with Gwalia playing Glasgow and Wolfhounds playing the Clothes in an Irish derby, both games at the Kingspan. And the final round of action will be the Parky Scarlets over in Lanethley is the, on the 3rd of March. It's a Clovers taking Edinburgh in the top half of the draw, and also Brithon taking on Gwalia in the Bottom half of the draw, another Welsh derby, kind of the repeat of the first game that we went to over on New Year's Day in Newport. And that, so that's kind of where we stand. It's the Celtic Challenge heading into the playoff rounds. I believe in these playoff rounds, the points from the regular season will be maintained. So it will be kind of accumulative from that. So it'll be interesting to see if anybody can topple Wolfhounds to that top spot. I think Edinburgh will be the one team who can do that. Edinburgh really building their momentum now. So it'll be really interesting to see if they can build that momentum for far enough to get that victory. That game in week one of the playoffs will be really important for Edinburgh if they are going to do that because a Wolfhounds victory in week one will kind of take the Celtic Challenge into their hands really, really strongly. So enough of me rambling on about the Celtic Challenge. Let's talk to Gwalia Lightning's Maisie Davis about her time in the Celtic Challenge so far this season. So Maisie, just first of all, um, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to chat to us. Just how are you and kind of how's the recovery been after a weekend of rugby? Yeah, no, I'm good. Uh, obviously, it was a tough lot, like tough loss, but so many positives to take from the game and nothing to be like disappointed about only getting about obviously us not winning that and finishing in the top three and can you kind of just talk us through your rugby journey kind of today and how you've got to being at Gwalia yeah uh, well I started when I was quite young actually um played for Dunvan played uh, there for about eight years until obviously I had to move and then I went down to um a girls hub in Australia soft Spons and internationally and then I kind of just Went from strength to strength. I was just enjoying it and then got picked up. And obviously, I played at uh, under 18s. I was lucky enough to play there. And recently, with the under 20s in Canada. And just how did Gwalior exactly come about? Was it kind of trials or was it a call from the coaches? Well, um, I think we had an email where we went to a uh, trial weekend. And then after that, then they invited us into the extended squad. <laughs> It's kind of how much you enjoying the, enjoying the experience so far. Obviously, after the kind of five regular rounds, two more to go. Just how you enjoying it so far? No, I'm loving it. And um, like being so young, I'm just constantly learning and developing so much as a player. Just learning from uh, our coaches who have had long international careers uh, in Cat and uh, Carol, and then playing alongside Brian, who's currently in like the international setup. But then as well, like being inspired by people who are we've got a um tight head who's a firefighter and like she works hard and it's just that's inspiring as well and obviously you've had two tough kind of away trips to Ireland that those two teams are very much stacked with their pretty much international squad just and you've run both of them close just how much did you learn from those two trips oh hugely um just 
play, like they were very, they were very physical games and them uh, we lost against Clovers by a point so that was obviously very very gutting but you can take that into training and learn so much from it and then with the uh, on the analysis side being able to look at that game and see where we went wrong personally because that's that's what we can control. And obviously there's kind of I've mentioned the Irish international there's international kind of stack across all the teams and just how much are you kind of enjoying playing against these stars obviously like Alice Callender playing for Brith yeah. on such a legend in the Welsh game now just how special yeah. is it kind of playing against these players? Really special like and like you said we I always used to watch Alex on TV and be like she's brilliant isn't she and playing with Robin now who's had so many caps and it's just unbelievable experience. And obviously, um, there's, you, you mentioned the 18s and 20s, kind of, you've been played in recently. There's a lot of them in the squad. There's a lot of your Cardiff Met teammates in the squad and Brith on squad. Just kind of that kind of help you settle in and make sure you're more comfortable in the environment. Yeah, it's nice going into training. Obviously, you're nervous, and but you've got as well, like your friends there who are also nervous, but you can talk to them, see how they're feeling and, it does help you settle into the squad and I feel like it. you start off well because obviously you've already bonded. And just obviously as quality, quality players in the Gwali team, just is there anybody who's kind of stood out for you so far? Obviously Nell and Tatha kind of being dragged away by Gloucester, but has kind of been anybody else who stood out for you? Yeah, um, I think Molly Reed and works very, very hard and is always consistent around the park. She just works hard for the full 80 and... As well, Gwen is obviously a very a standout. Um, uh, I thought Jenna Devira played very well on the weekend as well, and she's been a great asset to the team. I, I've mentioned Nell and Cathy. Does it kind of give you kind of like confidence boost? Obviously, that they've been called into playing PWR kind of every week now. That these opportunities are here, these pathways are here for us. Yeah, it's been starting um, for Gloucester the past few weeks and that's amazing to see obviously it's getting for us but you know we've got such a strong depth in our squad that we've got people like Kate Thicker who is now playing and is doing a great job as well as Caitlin Lewis who is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I I mentioned those pathways there just how important is this tournament being kind of Welsh rugby development obviously the 20s pathway came back last year that's a new thing that Pathway is slowly starting to build, but how important is this t- tournament for the development of the Welsh kind of national setup? Huge, um, especially because I've haven't long come back from injury, so I play in week in week out. My like your fitness, you just can't compete with people who are in England playing every week. You just playing this high level of rugby, it, like I said, every week is just brilliant. You know. And just quickly away from the Celtic Challenge, obviously I mentioned it at Cardiff Met, just how enjoyable is that kind of to be playing against the best of the best in kind of university rugby? You see the team's part we put out every week that's stacked full of kind of premiership talent. Just how enjoyable is that kind of as a pathway in a development competition for you? Yeah, no, I love it. Um, obviously, Hartbury are full of players who we played with. So obviously that's a huge rival and um something that we like to target and hopefully we get to play them again this season um but it's great like you obviously want to win against them teams but as well you've got that respect between one another which I think is a real good thing and just the final one for me before I let you go and enjoy the rest of your day just kind of what are your rugby goals for the rest of this season but also for the rest of 2024 too well obviously we've got two more games with Gualia so obviously to win them and put the dominant performances on and show that we can put an 80 minute performance. Uh, and then obviously go back into the Bucks um, games with Met. So to finish like highly in that would be great. And then the end goal then is to hopefully be involved with the twenties later on in the year. Perfect. All good. So Maisie, thank you so much for t- talking to us today. Best luck for the rest of the Celtic Challenge season and also for the rest of the book season too. No, thank you. Just to end this episode, we're having a little quick look at the PWR from last weekend. Obviously, the big story was Leicester's um, massive lead against Gloucester being cut and Gloucester coming on and winning that game. We'll touch a little bit more on that in a minute, but also the other results 
Obviously, Saracen's beaten the Trailfinders. Bristol Bears coming from behind to beat X to Chiefs. And also Harlequins is really impressive display against Sale Sharks. Four tries for Ellie Kildon. Three for Beth Wilcock. A really impressive showing from their back three plays. But just to touch on that Leicester cost Harper game, like I mentioned, just it's such a testament to the way Leicester have come that they have pushed the champions that far. They were 26 7 up at one point. And it's just such an impressive achievement for a team that is so fresh to the league. And you just see how much they are building and building. And that's credit to their coaches and credit to their coaching staff. But also credit to their recruitment because they've recruited so smart. Obviously, they've got Meg Jones in that back line. But there's other players who are really, really shining for them. It's Harley Brody, Rashima Bryan in the back row. Also, Claire Gallagher coming into the side now, Dean, the Canadian international. It's just really impressive to see how strong they've been oh sorry not how strong they are becoming now obviously win against sale last weekend um narrowly losing to gloucester this weekend and obviously they're facing loughborough in that derby this coming saturday game that we'll be at so we're really looking forward to that one just to see how much they have grown so far this season so thank you for listening to this week's episode of the women's rugby show weekly i've been sam by the way and we'll see you next week